Hey y'all, welcome back to Twin Oaks Family Farm in rural Southeast Ohio, USA. This is a hedge of stone crop, also known as sedum, and featuring it in our Saturday Show and Tell and Share today. This is September 14th, 2024, and we wanted to show you the sedum because of its great application as a pollinator attractor, and it's a great food source for pollinators. So if you are allergic to bees or just afraid of bees, it's probably not a plant you want to hang out around in the late summer, early fall when it's in full bloom. But as you can see here, when the bees are attracted to it, they are totally focused on it being a food source. They're totally focused on getting food from it. But uh, if you like landscaping and you're looking for a plant that's a great late summer bloomer and if it's a bonus to you that it's a wonderful attractor for pollinators and wonderful food source for them, then stone crops are a great plant to choose. This particular stone crop is Autumn Joy Sedum and we've just noticed here as it's come into full bloom in late summer how many bees it is hosting. I'm, I'm not an expert on bees. I'm presuming these are basically honey bees. We are in this area a lot. We frequent it. It's just adjacent to a building that we keep egg production hens in and it's right next to our front porch and right next to a gathering, gathering area. And we don't have a problem with the bees swarming or causing us any difficulty or even they don't cause us any fear they are totally focused on feeding <laughs> so so as you can see though this is hosting a bunch bunch of honeybees now here again this is where my lack of knowledge of the the bees and the species will really show uh there are some that look a little different the the one that's really dark and, and a very noticeable dark black and yellow contrast right there. Obviously looks different from these other ones, so I'm sure you know there's different species there, but again, totally focused on feeding. So absolutely, if somebody knows their bee species, let me know, educate me on, on who is visiting our Autumn Joy Sedum, but they just, they just love it. So this is a hedge that's been in place probably at least four or five years. Very low maintenance, very easy care. It's a perennial, so it just comes back year after year. There's uh, probably about nine plants in this entire hedge, and we just let them die back and go dormant in the fall and winter. And then typically in the spring, I'll cut cut all the dead stems back to ground level and then it'll take off again in the fall or uh, in the spring and by fall we have these beautiful blooms that are uh, they get kind of a red color these are starting to fade back now actually because they've been in full bloom a bit but the sedum also attracts butterflies and moths so it's really great for migrating butterflies that come along late in the season, late in summer, and need a food source. So, so anyway, just wanted to show y'all the sedum plant. We're, so as we go on here with Saturday Show and Tell and Share, we're going to take just a short walk and go see the dahlia bed. Wanted to show y'all that. And we'll go over to the meat bird barn before we finish up to show y'all the meat birds, they're 11 days old, okay? So I'm gonna turn the camera around here in just a moment. Not always real graceful at that. Before I do, here's some of the hens, part of our egg production hens. So these darker feathered ones here are called production reds. And we actually have some lighter red feathered hens that have joined this group as well. They are Isa Browns. Something kind of interesting about all those hens is they're all hybrids. So they're hybrids that have been developed with the intention to 
have a, a great egg layer, great egg production hen. And of all these hens, they share a common, kind of a common lineage in um, the Rhode Island Red. So these darker feathered ones, production reds, they're a hybrid developed from crossing Rhode Island Red and New Hampshire Red. And then the lighter red feathered ones, they're a hybrid called Isa Brown. And we believe there to be probably four breeds in that combination to produce that hybrid. But one of them, I believe, is Rhode Island Red. Now here's a rogue hen. She was in here and she got on top of this little barrier and has decided she wants to be outside. We have one of these production reds that likes to nest right behind the open door there and lay her egg right there. But we need to uh, to go in and do a check on the hens here pretty soon. It's almost evening chore time. Gonna get the camera turned around. So we're gonna take a short walk. Uh, we're in rural Southeast Ohio, USA. And we appreciate you joining us for Saturday Show and Tell and Share here at our happy little home place. And uh, part of our routine is running a small poultry farm operation in which we have the egg production chickens, about 60 of those and two little flocks of 30 each, and producing homegrown top quality poultry from Cornish Rock Cross meat chickens. So we'll end our video today up at the Meatbird Barn. On our way there, we'll see the dahlias. Wanted to also show you that and feature those in our show and tell and share video today. Uh, and I'll tell you about some of the YouTube channels that I've been watching and that I enjoy. And I hope that you're doing great. Thanks for joining us. If you join us through the week on Twin Oaks Farm Poultry, we like to show you the meat bird flocks that we have in production and do videos with the meat birds and videos with the egg production chickens but uh we put up videos monday tuesday wednesday and thursday take friday off from videos released for the public and then do our saturday show and tell and share so going to turn the camera around we're down here at the dahlia bed actually have been cutting some of the flowers from the stallia bed so right now there's still some blooms in it we ended up with four colors in the stallia bed so that's kind of like a salmon color that we've got there here's another one of that same color is really really pretty we had like a burgundy which you can kind of see on this one real pretty burgundy this one is opening up it's going to be burgundy and we had a real pretty light pink. I don't have any in bloom right now, I don't think, that are that light pink. It looks like this is probably gonna be one, or is one, and it's, it's unfurling, it's blooming. And then there was this very pretty white color. Oh, I think we can get it right here. So, but it's still, even that one, it has a little bit of like a pink, ooh, must, <laughs> sorry, it's right on a leaf and got too close. It has a real pretty, almost a pink or lavender tinge out toward the end. So here's some buds coming along. So this was a really fun project having the dahlia bed. This was uh, actually just a raised bed that we kind of put in here. I think this, either this spring or last fall but we weren't really using it for anything. Here's some that need deadheaded. They've already bloomed and they're finished. Lots, lots of buds though. These are flush with a lot of buds. So I think we're gonna have quite a few flowers coming out there, but it was really a fun project raising the dahlias. And how that came about is uh, the tubers, which is down in the soil and the part that the dahlia bush actually grows from, the tubers were a gift from a friend. And so she got those to us the very end of May and we put them in the soil the very end of May. And then those plants start growing and eventually they set bloom and you get these beautiful dahlia blooms and they're great for cutting flowers and having fresh flowers in your home or sharing with friends and family. But I really think I wanna do 
the Dahlia project again in 2025. So when our, our friend gave us the tubers, she gave me instructions and what to expect you know, as far as getting them planted, getting them started. And they could have been started sooner in the spring, like after, you know, the last frost, after danger of frost had passed. But here for us in rural Southeast Ohio, that's really kind of around Mother's Day, typically, is, is when we assume that we're kind of in that safe zone where there's no more danger of frost. So, you know, really, end of May was still some, somewhat the earliest we could have planted them and not had to worry about frost. So uh, they've been blooming several weeks. And I know that when we get here into like October, like a month from now, we get past the first frost, then I think that we can cut those plants back to the ground, dig up the tubers. I need to learn how to like kind of condition the tubers and, and prepare them for storage over winter, but we can store them over winter. And if we store them properly over winter, those same tubers can be planted again next year. So let us know if you, grow dahlias or if you grow any kind of fabulous flowers and, and what you're raising, we are going to go ahead and, and go on up to the meat bird barn while we're heading up there. I'm going to tell you about some channels I've been enjoying. Maybe you'll check them out. Maybe you'll tell us in the comments about channels on YouTube that you enjoy. So um, some I've been watching this week, Peterson Farm Brothers, really awesome channel. Uh, I believe it's Kansas Farm Family, fifth generation farm family. And something really neat on that channel is that there's a trio of brothers. Um, and I think there's also a sister, but they have done like over the last 10 years plus song parodies, very musically talented. And they do some great videos on music parodies that they do. And the videos that they create include the farm and scenes from the farm equipment from the farm and the lyrics are focused on their farm experiences and it's it's a great storytelling experience and it's really a wonderful way that they're telling people that aren't involved directly with farms about agriculture so i think it's wonderful so i was catching up on some peterson farm brothers videos this past week also, Mother Clucker's Chicken Farm, that's a Florida, USA-based channel. Really informative, especially if you love egg production chickens and backyard chickens. Have your own flock or want to have your own flock. Also, information about ducks on there and quail. So, you might want to check that one out. Really good. Been watching those clucking around Texas, USA and Chima's Chicken Coop, Germany. Neat live stream to watch on Chima's flock and farmer always in canada and i love love farmer always videos they're up in canada the scenery is beautiful again this is a ranching family and they're sharing with us their day-to-day -day experiences on the ranch and it's it's like you're right there you get to see what they experience so y'all check out those channels um they're they're really fun to watch and see those different experiences. So uh, we are going to take a look at our meat birds that are currently here. Let me think a little bit. This is our fifth flock of 2024. With this flock, we have now started, I almost can't believe this to say this out loud because we're just, we're just a family of five doing this at our household because we love the quality of homegrown poultry and we want other people to experience the quality of homegrown poultry so we started raising these meat chickens and gradually raising a little bit more each year uh, over like the last five years so uh, with this flock i just can't even believe this we have started 1550 Cornish Rock Cross meat chickens here at our place in 2024 already. So uh, we have 433 of them in production right now. And then we'll have another flock um, from mid-October to the very beginning of December of just 100 birds. But this is a flock of 433. And they moved in. Again, let me think through my dates. They are 11 days old. So that wasn't helpful. They just made the chickens move. 
Um, this is Tanner, our Dotson, and the teddy bear dog is here too, but he, he walked out of view there. So, uh, this is 433 of them. I was trying to think through the dates. They moved in September 4th, 2024. Uh, they are here to October 4th. Um, well, I can't remember. I think October 14th, actually, they're here. So then our, our next flock, they must come in later. I was I had just said about having one more flock of a hundred. They must move in later, like maybe around the twenty sixth or something of October. And they're here from like October twenty sixth to December fourth. This flock is here from September fourth to October fourteenth. So so in that time, which is just right at six weeks, we will expect them to grow to the point that uh, they'll be ready for poultry production. So we'll actually take them to USDA inspected processor at that point at right at six weeks old. And we will expect, like if the ones of them that we have made into whole chickens, we will expect to get back from the processor like a five pound or six pound whole chicken. Um, that'll be about the size range that we'll expect to get from raising these birds on a six week timetable. We expect them to eat 4,000 pounds of feed on that timetable so from when they moved in on september 4th to when we move them out on october 14th we we are prepared to feed them 4,000 pounds of feed and they are thriving and they have a heavy appetite so i think they will uh, have no problem hitting the target feed consumption quantity okay so uh, we're actually fixing to do evening chores here as well and i can see that they've eaten a lot of their feeders almost empty so there's 20 of these small feeder trays in here right now we will be filling them all and putting more feed in here uh, you can see the waters are um, like single gallon waters they're they still have water in them but it's getting kind of low and the birds have kicked debris into the trays of the waters so what we do is we pick all those up we dump all those trays out clean the trays out fill the waters an alternative to that could be an automatic water system, which which is definitely possible, which saves a little manual labor and, and is a great idea. However, we are content with the like the water dispensers um, and using a water dispenser system and manually filling it because we can and you probably could do this with an automatic system as well. You could probably meter it somehow and and know how much water your birds are consuming but we like the manual system that we use because we're filling it we're keeping track of how much are they actually drinking we know how much water we're putting in there so we can know right away like if they go down on water consumption like going off of water consumption that would be an indicator of something you know not going well and we would need to respond to that so um you know we with having to fill them manually we're very aware of the quantity of water that they're consuming same with our feed you could have an automatic feed system where you're just dumping it in and it's you know it's distributing it to the birds but this way you know we're able to know um, at any given time one or some of us is able to keep track of that and know you know like how much are they eating and are they on track for what we expect them to consume? And if they're not on track, we know that right away too. So, and, and we've had that happen with flocks because a lot of things with raising meat birds can put them off of their feed consumption. One thing can be temperature extremes that make them uncomfortable. That can actually cause them to not eat. Um, sometimes just because like if they're too cold, they're prioritizing warmth. So they won't leave the warmth to go to the food if it's away from where uh, the warm spots are. And then in extreme heat, they just don't want to move around. So that will actually just cause them to be very lethargic. So, so those are things we're always watching, but this flock is doing excellent. Really pleased with this flock. And honestly, I would say for where we are in Southeast Ohio, if I had to pick any time of year to raise birds, to raise these meat chickens, this is the time of year I would pick. This stretch from like, uh, September or even late August out to middle or end of, of October. That's our flock, whatever flock ends up, you know, for the year in that time frame, always has the best weather conditions throughout 
production for their wants and needs and just seems to really thrive so this is this is um likely going to be a really super successful flock for us so so that is it y'all for us today at saturday show and tell and share here at twin oaks family farm we hope that you'll continue to join us like i said we will put up videos monday tuesday wednesday and thursday and uh, in fact this week's videos coming up are are already uploaded and scheduled for um, monday tuesday and thursday i believe and then on wednesday we upload a a watch it later Wednesday where I share with you some videos that were from my watch later list on the YouTube app and um, ones that I've pulled off the watch later list and watched and I tell you about them and and give you my feedback and reaction to them so so hope you'll join us for some of those but we'll definitely keep you posted on how these chicks are doing 11 days old right here corner sharp cross meat chickens in production for poultry we hope that y'all have an excellent week Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Please give us a thumbs up, interact with a comment, and consider a membership.